Number one says Noah solved the equation 5x squared equals 45. Here are his steps. Do you agree? Explain your reasoning. Um, so certainly three is a solution because we can do three times three is nine and nine times five is 45. So this is certainly a solution. However, when you go from this step to this step, and you do the square root of x squared, remember that when you do the square root, there's a positive and a negative solution here because positive three squared is nine and negative three squared is nine. So the solutions to this are plus or minus square root of nine or plus or minus three. So we just missed the negative three there. Number two, find the solution or solutions to each of the equations or explain why there isn't a solution. So we're going to isolate the square root first by subtracting 7 from both sides. So that's going to give us um, the square root of x to the, sorry, the square root of x plus 4 and then equals negative 2. And so you always want to isolate that square root. And now we see that there's no solution because a square root cannot equal a negative number. So when we square root something, it's not going to be negative. So no solution to part A. Part B, we'll isolate the square root again. So we'll add 2 to both sides. So we end up with the square root of 47 minus x equals 6. So this is fine. Okay, we have a square root equal to a positive. So then we're going to square both sides. And so when we square both sides, that square root and the squared will cancel. So we end up with 47 minus x equals 36. So then we can subtract 47 from both sides. 47 minus 47 is 0, so we're left with negative x. And 36 minus 47 is negative 11. So then we'll divide by negative 1, and we get that x equals positive 11. And then for part C, so we again want to isolate the square root. So we're going to want to undo this 1 half, which means that we'll multiply both sides by 2. Because 2 times a half is just 1. So then we just have the square root of 20 plus x, and that's equal to 10. So then we will undo this square root by squaring both sides. And we end up with 20 plus x is equal to 10 squared, which is 100. So then we can just subtract 20 from both sides because 20 minus 20 is 0 plus x is just x, and then 100 minus 20 is 80. Number three, which of the following is a solution to this equation? So you could go ahead and plug each of these in um, and see which one works, or we can isolate the square root like we did on the last part. So we're going to subtract 13, so we would just get square root of 5 minus x, and then this is 0, so equals 4 minus 13, which is negative 9. And then a square root cannot equal a negative number, so that means that this equation has no solutions. Number 4, select all expressions that are equal to this. Um, so I'm just going to rewrite this a couple of different ways. So I'm going to rewrite it um, with a fractional exponent. So remember, square root is a 2. So then we could write it as a 2 to the 5 halves. So that's how it would be with just an exponent. And then remember, when we have a positive exponent in the bottom, we could bring that exponent to the top and make it negative. So this would also be equal to 5 to the or sorry, 2 to the negative 5 halves. So let's take a look at a couple of these. Um, so this isn't right. We can't just all of a sudden put the 5 from the exponent on top. Okay, so that's not going to work. Um, 1 over the square root of 2 to the 5th. So can we bring this, this 5 into the 2? Absolutely. Okay, so this one is fine. Um, and then 2 to the 5th power... 
Okay, so if we then kind of manipulate this one, 2 to the 5th is equal to 32. So this would also be equal to 1 over the square root of 32. So this would be good. Um, the negative would be with the exponent when we move this to the top. Okay, so the negative doesn't just make the base negative. It's the exponent that goes negative. So D would be wrong. And then so would E, the negative isn't going to come out front here. But a negative 5 halves power, that is going to be true. Number 5, which are the solutions to this equation? So remember that we've got two solutions here when we put the square root in. So we get x equals the plus or minus square root of 6 because 6 times 6 equals 36 and negative 6 times negative 6 also equals positive 36. So 6 and negative 6 work. Number six, here's the graph of y equals x squared. Use the graph to estimate um, all solutions to the equation x squared equals three. So then we're looking at a y value of three. So let's just look here. And so then you're estimating what this x value is. So we're just going down here to try to determine what this um, x value might be. So looks like maybe halfway between one and a half and two. So if I estimated, I would say maybe um, like 1.75 and negative 1.75 as my estimations. So then part B says, if you square your estimate, um, what number should they be close to? So we estimated that this number squared would be 3. So it should be close to 3 when we square it. So then let's actually square these. Um, so 1.75 times 1.75. And maybe your estimate was different than mine. Um, this is just what I chose. And 1.75 squared is 3.0625. Um, so negative 1.75 squared is also 3.0625. So pretty close. Pretty good estimate there. Number seven, the polynomial function Q of X equals this, and it has a known factor of 3X plus five. So let's rewrite it as a product of linear factors. So first thing we're going to need to do is divide this. Okay, so I'm going to divide this polynomial um, by this binomial. So I'm going to make a box here with two rows. Um, and so we're dividing by 3x plus 5. And we're going to start with 3x cubed in here, which is this first term. So then 3x times what gives us 3x cubed? So 3x times 1 x squared would give us this. And so then we'll fill in this bottom box by doing x squared times 5. So that's 5x squared. Then this box and this box need to add together to equal the x squared term. And so 5x squared plus 6x squared would get me to 11x squared. So then we'll start over, and so 3x times 2x will give me that 6x squared, and then 2x times 5 gives me 10x. So then 10x plus this box needs to equal my x term of negative 14x. Um, so we're here at 10. We need to get all the way down here to negative 14 and this would be zero. So this would be down 10 to get to zero, and then down another 14. So this needs to be negative 24x. So 10x minus 24x gives me that negative 14x. So now we'll figure out 3x times negative eight gives me negative 24x, and then negative 8 times 5 gives me negative 40, which matches here. So we did it correctly. So now we'll want, okay, so we know that 3x plus 5 is a factor. And so now we're left with times um, x squared plus 2x minus 8. 
So we just want to factor this part now. So we have the 3x plus 5. And now this has an A value of 1. So we know it's going to be a binomial of x times x. And we want the factors of negative 8 that add to positive 2. So we want that to be plus 4 and minus 2. Because then we'll get 4x and negative 2x when we add those together a positive 2x. And 4 times negative 2 gives me that negative 8. So then this would be your product of linear factors.